Hello again, welcome back to section 6.4, applications of the uh, integral, and we're talking about work. I'm remembering that work is force times distance. And we can use that formula, work equals force times distance. If, work is, if force is constant and uh, distance is constant, then we just plug in the numbers that we have and we can calculate our um, work done, the amount of energy to push an object a certain distance of, a, of an object of a particular force. Well, this is an example where we might need to use calculus because either the force is variable or the distance is variable. And looking at lifting ropes over uh, the sides of buildings or lifting them, we will have what is known as a variable distance. And so how do we handle these? So let's take a look at example four here. A heavy rope that weighs two pounds per foot is used to drop 800 pounds of equipment down a mine shaft 500 feet deep. Find the work done in lifting back the rope. So we're just here lifting back the rope, but we don't need to deal with the um, 800 pounds of equipment, right? So that's what we're after right now is just lifting the rope. So let's draw a picture. Usually that's one of the best things to do when uh, you are solving problems is draw a picture, label it correctly, give it some variables, and try to see relationships and um, translate uh, into an equation and solve. State your facts and ask your questions. All right, so I'm gonna say that this is the top of the shaft, right? And I'm gonna put axes at the top. So I'm gonna actually put zero, my origin, at the top of the, the mine shaft. And I'm just gonna label this uh, axes X. It's okay if you label it Y, if, if that's more comfortable for you to always use the vertical line as Y, but we can call it any axis name that we want. And I'm gonna draw my little rope. Here's my little rope. And I know that we have uh, dropped it to 500 feet, right? Good. So, um, and we've already dropped our 800 pounds at the bottom. 800 pounds there. All right. So how we use calculus uh, to figure out how much work it is just to lift the rope back, what we want to do is divide our rope into delta x slices, right? So this would be a delta x slice, and that delta x would be in feet, right? So our delta x, just as an arbitrary one, would be in feet. Good. Then um, I'm going to use that analytic geometry rule that uh, the distance out along an axis from zero would be x, good? And that x is going to be my distance to the delta x slice, good? So I do know that um, each delta x slice, the force on it from our delta force on each slice is going to be two pounds per foot times delta x feet, right? Because then I can cancel my units of measurement here and I can see that we've got two delta x uh, pounds of, and that's how much each delta x slice weighs. Now I can go forward and write my delta work the work done in lifting that slice to the top is going to be the delta force times the distance. And our delta force from above is 2 delta x, and the distance that that slice has to move is x feet, right? So we have that our delta work is going to be 2x delta x. We know that our total work is going to be the integral of our delta work and over the entire range of that rope. And we know that that rope is 500 feet 
and our slices start from zero. And so we're going to um, from zero to 500 of our delta work. And that's going to give us zero to 500 of 2x dx. When we integrate, the integral of 2x is 2x squared divided by 2, which is x squared. And we're going from 0 to 500. And so we're going to get 500 squared foot pounds because we are in US units of measurement. Good. So in general, we do want to use um, that. Our, we want to try as much as possible when we're lifting things or pumping fluids, when we have a distance that is variable, we'll want to try to put our axes on our picture up at the top of where we need to push it. Okay, so let's say for instance, they actually asked you to lift the 800 pounds back up to, right? So if I wanted, what would, uh, what if you had to, to lift the 800 pounds too. So remember, when you've got constant force and constant distance, it's just force times distance. So the total uh, would be work to lift the 800 pounds plus the work to lift the rope. And so since this 800 pounds is constant force, it has to go up 500 feet. This would just be 800 times 500. It wouldn't require calculus, but the second part would still be that same derivation because you have variable uh, distance. Good. And we would have that 2x dx from 0 to 500. And this would both be in units of foot pounds, and so you can add them together. Good. All right, this one is a bit tricky because it involves three different problems, okay? Because here, let's just read this here, and it says, a bucket with a mass 10 kilograms hanging off of a rope that is one kilogram per meter used to collect water from a well 20 meters deep. Once the bucket is full with five kilograms of water is collected, it takes five minutes to lift the bucket to the top at a constant speed. However, the bucket has a hole and water leaks out at a steady rate of 0 0.01 kilograms per second. So find the work needed to raise the bucket to the top of the well. Okay, so and raising that bucket involves lifting the rope too. So in order to break this down, sometimes um, I, do, I also still want to draw a picture but also I want to um, break down the work that we need to do, pun completely intended. So if I draw a picture, here's my rope, here's my bucket, right? And we have, there's my bucket and inside, I've got water, and I have water leaking out, right? Good, and this is, I've got a little bit of water down to below. All right, I do want to draw my axes, and I'm gonna put the zero up at the top. And I do know that this is a well that is 20 meters deep. So we're going to be going from 0 to 20 meters. And I want to point out just the, the amount of work that needs to be done. Our total work, because there's three different types. The bucket is a constant weight, and it's a constant distance. So that's just a force times distance. Uh, lifting the rope is going to be very similar to the problem that we just did where we're going to divide the rope into delta x slices and um, lift it piece by piece and then calculate the work as the total sum of lifting it piece by piece. 
But then we have to deal with the work to lift the water in the bucket because lifting the water in the bucket is changing. It's not only going to have at each level variable force because there's dripping water and there's gonna be less water at each delta X level, but we're also um, going to have uh, some variable distance, right? As we go up, because we'll want to um, calculate at each level how much water and then calculate what it what the force is on that and then move forward. So uh, we do want to say that total work here is going to be, uh, and let me just erase that part because I might need more space. The total work is going to be the work to lift the rope. plus the work to lift the bucket. And plus the work to lift the water in the bucket. Good, so you'll want to do these uh, in different uh, stages. So I'm just going to draw out little partitions to help keep it separate and organized. Yep. Okay, so let's start with work to lift the rope. Right, and how do we do that? We do know that we've got um, one kilogram, right? We see here that the rope is one kilograms per meter. And how are we going to get to force times distance with work? We know that our units of measurement of force is the Newton. And how to get to the Newton, we multiply uh, kilograms times 9.8. So we'll let just start with the delta mass. Right, and our delta mass is the mass of our slice. And remember, we are taking just an arbitrary delta x slice, right? And that delta x is gonna be in meters. So um, we would say that our delta mass is going to be that one kilogram per meter, that's that density of the rope, times delta x meters we'll be able to cancel our units of measurement. And so we will get that delta mass is just going to be delta X kilograms. And so then we, we want to do what's our delta force is gonna be our delta mass times 9.8 meters per second squared because that is our acceleration due to gravity and we can get to Newtons that way. And so this is just going to be 9.8 delta x uh, newtons. And that's our delta force. And what is our delta work? Our delta work, and remember this is the work to lift that one slice, and then we're gonna lift all the slices through an integral, is going to be force times distance. And remember the distance down to a slice from zero is gonna equal x. So our uh, delta work is going to be delta force times distance, and so our delta force is 9.8 delta x, and our distance here is x. So we would have 9.8 x delta x is our delta work, good. Our range of slices is going to be zero to 20 because we have a rope that's 20 meters deep if it's going to the bottom, right? So our total work is gonna be the integral from zero to 20 of our delta work, and that's gonna be zero to 20 of uh, 9.8x dx, and that's gonna give us uh, 4.9, x squared from zero to 20. And doing uh, our fundamental theorem of calculus, we have 4.9 times 20 squared. 
and that's approximately equal to 1960 joules okay so that is our work to lift the rope all right so now the second one the work to lift the bucket is pretty simple um, that can be done right here The work to lift the bucket is constant, constant, so that it would just be work is force times distance. And it does say that the bucket has mass 10 kilograms. So um, we don't want to forget to multiply by 9.8 to get to our force unit. So this would be 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and then times 20 meters. And that's going to give us, uh, again, 1,960. Good. Uh, joules. And that's the work to lift the bucket. Now comes the super hard part because we've got water that is dripping. Good. So, and at each delta x level, it's going to be a less uh, a different force. So force is going to be variable and distance is also uh, going to be variable. So um, let us take a look at that. Well, the, actually the distance is going to be kind of, we're going to, we're going to do the same idea of how much work is it going to lift uh, delta X distance and then recalculate the force and how much is it going to. So in reality, this is a, variable force problem. All right, so let's draw as much space as we can to find this. Okay, and let's draw it in deep purple. Okay, so work to lift the water in the bucket. Okay, and it does have variable force. So here, what's our delta mass? Remember, um, our delta mass, if we go back to the problem, it says, once the bucket is full with five kilograms of water is collected, it takes five minutes to lift the bucket to the top at a constant speed. However, the bucket has a hole and water leaks out at a steady rate of 0 0.01 kilograms per second. And so this is where I think units of measurement really come into play and really help you get somewhere. Okay, but let's remember that our delta mass, where it's what's going to be the mass of the water at the delta X level, right? And that's going to be five kilograms minus the total water loss up to that level, that delta X level. Up to that delta X level. And this is what I mean by um, the delta X level, right? So if the distance down to that delta X level is X, then we can say, that up here, which is the total distance that's traveled by the water up to that level is 20 minus X, right? Because that distance plus X should be 20. And so now we know what that distance is. Good. And so how do we finish this then? We're gonna be using some units of measurement. So we've got, this is gonna equal five minus, and we know that it's leaking 0.01 kilograms uh, per second, right? We know uh, that there is, because it takes five minutes to get to the top, I'm just going to go ahead and change my uh, seconds to minutes. And so I'm just going to rewrite and say that there are 60 seconds to one minute. 
and now I can cancel my seconds. And now I've, I've got uh, kilograms per minute. I know that it is going to take five minutes to go 20 meters, right? So we have five minutes over 20 meters and I can then cancel my minutes with my minutes and now I have kilograms per meter. And if I multiply by the distance that we've traveled and the distance that we've traveled to level X is going to be times 20 minus X meters, I can cancel my meters and now I am left with kilograms and that's what my delta mass should be is in kilograms. And so we end up with five minus and then that 0 0.01 times 60 times five gives me 0.15. Oh, and then divided by 20, right? 20, uh, 60 divided by 20 is three. Three times five is 15. 15 times 0 0.01 is 0 0.15. And we end up with 20 minus X. And that should be my delta mass. And that should be in kilograms. Whew, that's how we dealt with some dimensional analysis there. Now we're moving towards force. And so how do we get force from mass? We multiply by 9.8. So our delta force is going to be delta mass times 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we're going to get that this is equal to 5 minus 0.15 times 20 minus x times 9.8. Good, meters per second squared. And now our delta work is going to be delta force times distance. And in this case, we're just going to move, it's got variable force, so we want to calculate, um, use that force for a very small distance and then recalculate that force for another small distance. And so we want to use delta x as our distance, right? So this one is going to be 5 minus 0.15 times 20 minus x times 9.8. That's my delta force. And my distance here is going to be delta x. All right, and I just want to make a note, variable force. All right, so use distance equal to delta x, because then you'll want to, at each stage, recalculate that new one. All right, so if I were to uh, distribute that 0.15 through the 20 through the minus x, I would end up with um, this equaling 5 uh, minus 3 plus 0.15x, and then the 9.8 delta x. And you can see that that's going to be 2 plus 0.15x. times 9.8 delta x, and we're still going, that water is still traveling over a range from zero to 20, and so our delta, or our total work to lift the water is gonna be the integral from zero to 20 of our delta work, and that's gonna give me 9.8 times the integral from zero to 20 of two plus 0.15 x, or dx, and in integrating that, we would get 9.8 times 2x plus 0.15x squared divided by 2. And we're going from 0 to 20. And we end up with uh, 686 joules after multipl uh, multiplying, right? We would get... 9.8 times 2 times 20 is 40, plus 0.15, uh, 20 times 20 is 400, divided by 2, and then we would have 
minus zero plus zero, and we end up with, on our calculator, 686 joules. So we go over here and we say total work is the rope was um, 1,960 joules. The bucket was also 1,960 joules. And the water was 686 joules. And we end up with a whopping 4,606 joules. That was a pretty hefty problem, but I hope you get the idea of variable force or variable distance in lifting ropes. Good. And that does it for this one. We're going to split off into another part three for work problems, and that will deal with stretching and compressing springs using Hooke's Law. I'll see you then.